My name is Anthony Padilla, and today I'll be spending a day with Dream, the immensely popular, beloved, and oft polarizing faceless creator, to learn what it's like to wear the crown of most rapidly growing Minecrafter on the internet, the highly anticipated face reveal, controversy and criticism, and what Dream's future really looks like. By the end of this video, we'll find out. Has this astronomical rise to super fame been nothing but blissful as Dream reaps the benefits of stardom while remaining completely anonymous? Or has the expectations and critique from fans and cynics alike proven far too too overwhelming to catch even a moment of peace. Hello, Dream. Hello. When someone in person asks what you do for a living, what do you say? Advertising, usually. <laughs> advertising? advertising. You're like, I just advertise to 73 million people per video. It's kind of true. You went from 1 million subscribers on the last day of 2019 to over 22 million in less than 500 days. How has that affected you most? It hasn't changed my everyday life much yet. I feel like it definitely will right. like after like a face reveal or something because that's more when I'm actually doing things. I feel like if it wasn't for COVID, it would have changed my life a lot. COVID kind of started getting big around the time that I started getting big. So you were competing in popularity with COVID. <laughs> oh God, no, I, I wouldn't say that. Has all this attention caused you any kind of struggles at all or has it really just been chill for you? It's caused a lot of problems with me and like trust. Oh really, you have trust issues now. But I definitely have trust <laughs> issues now as compared to before, but. It's kind of because you are not sure if people wanna to get to know you for the reputation you have online versus just wanting to interact with you. In terms of like your personal life and things that you can't vent, you can't show your emotions yeah. as much like, oh, who knows if this person's recording you. True, you just have to sit there with a the mask on with a smile constantly so everyone thinks it's you're okay. <laughs> Always. When did you first experience your first spike in growth? I uploaded a video trying to find PewDiePie's Minecraft seed. Overnight, it got like 100,000 views and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is insane. This video is blowing up. PewDiePie is just like at the center of everything on the internet. His series from back then, I remember watching it and being like, wow, like it's like a drama series, but he adds this music and stuff that makes it dramatic. Oh my God, this is the most intense gameplay. Ah! Oh. I, when I ended up doing Manhunt down the line, I did that same thing. You were a developer too, like you, coded things behind the scenes in, in Minecraft? I think the first thing I coded was a pig exploded, like a creeper. It was a cursed Minecraft video where everything was just going wrong. I was breaking dirt with like a pickaxe and I was throwing away all my diamonds in the lava. And that definitely was one of the main reasons why I was able to catapult was because I was doing things that other YouTubers like couldn't do. So that kind of gave you an edge in a way, helped you stand out from the probably millions of other people that were at least attempting to make Minecraft content at the time. A really big advantage. What was your reaction to realizing that you had a viral video that first time that you saw that a video had like blown up? I thought, this is awesome, but I can't screw this up. The first thing you thought about was how you could fail now. Yeah, my first- Like you had something to lose. A lot of people can get one viral video. The problem is that using that True. and turning it into success. I didn't expect it to come this early, but this is my chance right now, right here. And I was like every morning waking up and just like going, going, going. I know this feeling too. Like when we had our first video blow up in like 2005, I was like, pedal the metal, baby, we're not stopping. Yeah. And it just felt like we had to almost. Like if we didn't, then we were wasting that opportunity. If I don't do this, I'm an idiot. I, I need to put every- <laughs> single minute right now into it because if I don't, I will regret it. Have you taken any breaks since then? Actually recently was my first like actual break. I don't even tell anybody, but there was just three days where I just was like not on my phone. Three days is your break. But yeah, I was like, like three days. Ooh, I gave myself a three day weekend. <laughs> I still ended up streaming during the three days, but I was like, of okay. Course. So it wasn't even a break. A lot of what I do in my free time now I, is like considered work. Cause like I, I'll be watching YouTube right. videos and instead of enjoying the video, I'll be going like, okay, well, why they do that? What do you think it is about your content that helps you stand out? I feel like I didn't blow up because I have this like amazing personality or um, because of my looks. Come or... on, Dream, you got an amazing personality, okay? <laughs> I think I blew up because of my ideas, the quality of the idea and the execution of the idea versus yeah. the quality of like the personality. Do you think you're most well known for your manhunt videos now? In this video, I try and speed run and beat Minecraft while my friend does everything in his power to kill me. Oh, for sure. My most popular ones are manhunts, yeah. I saw the other day you were about to release one and you were about to uh, like do like a premiere for it. And it said something like 600,000 people are waiting for this premiere. Yeah. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Does that ever set in for you? And you're like, that is like, that is so many people. Yeah, it definitely has. I mean, I've been sitting there, I think it got up to 800,000 something. And I was like, oh my gosh, Woo! this is insane. That experience of like, wow, there's this many people like watching me right now, like in this moment. How often do you get people theorizing that these manhunt videos are like completely scripted because they are just, some of the moments in them are just like too good. Bye dream. Wait, what? 
Oh, oh my gosh! What? Now, every manhunt, obviously, there's probably a hundred different videos and posts and saying, oh, this is suspicious. Like, it really is just mostly in how I edit the videos. But if you watch, like, an uncut version, you'll yeah. see that, like, a lot of the parts that, like, are so intense in the video, you're listening to it and without the music and without the cuts, you're just sitting there like, oh, this is kind of boring. Wait, I'm on fire! Come on. No. Wait, I'm on fire! Come on. No. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. George! Come on, George, come on! When it gets you into the moment, you really feel like, wow, this is insane! And then you're watching, oh, he's just he's just running. Because the pacing of the way that you cut it, it feels like it has like a story arc to it, like in a way that would be scripted. It's meant to be like a story because th those videos do really well on YouTube. I think that's because a lot of people watch them that don't care about Minecraft because they watch them like they're like an anime or a movie. They are so captivating that it's like you cannot look away at any moment. It's like a crime to look away. That's had a lot to do with the success of them. Your username, what's your story behind Dream and your white blob? I think it was just me and Sapnap actually. We were just like in a call and we were spitballing names and, and I came up with Dream On, like Aerosmith, but then ended up morphing into just Dream. But the blob character, my girlfriend at the time, this was like four years ago, made matching Discord profile pictures. They were very similar to what my blob looks like now. I was going through thinking, oh, I need a, like a YouTube icon. I was going through like my pictures on my computer and I saw that and I was like, oh, what? Something similar to that could be kind of good. <laughs> were you concerned at all like the the name just dream five letters probably impossible to find when you search dream on the internet i wasn't worried because i thought most people would be searching like dream minecraft everyone knows how to spell dream everyone knows if you True. say dream it's very memorable and it's very easy to to spread almost as catchy and easy to remember as anthony padilla and creative <laughs> too how'd you come up with that one took some inspiration from my parents what's the story behind the dream SMP. I feel like that's kind of what all these other Minecrafters are a part of, who are huge, and it's got your name right in the title. The Dream SMP, originally, I, I just wanted to play survival with me and my friends until eventually Tommy in it. Just talked to him a couple weeks ago. <laughs> don't miss it. Link somewhere. I don't know. He ended up asking if he could join. And originally, I said no. I was like, ah, nah, because he was but such a big troll. <laughs> you didn't know if you wanted him on there. <laughs> I didn't. I was like, no, I don't, I don't really want him on here. He's kind, of, he's kind of a troll. Maybe that'd be a good thing. He joins and he's trolling. That adds kind of like a different aspect. There was no name for the SMP and Tommy was like, I need a name for the titles. And he's like, I'm gonna put Dream SMP because it's clickbaiting you. And I was like, okay, that seems mm. that sounds like a great idea. How does it feel knowing that the Dream SMP isn't just spawning popular Minecrafters, but it's spawning some of the most popular personalities on the entire internet. I'm honestly not that surprised. When I go through and I add somebody to the S&P, the main things I'm looking for, I don't want them to just be successful in the S&P. I want them to take that right. and I want them to be successful outside of that, whether it's on YouTube or music or whatever it is that th I think this person is talented. Do you frequently get called the greatest Minecraft player of all time? I do. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'll just say that. I'm definitely, I'm definitely not. People always say just comparing people to like other YouTubers because you only know what you see. Probably some 15 year old kid who, who spends 12 hours a day grinding Minecraft every day. That's probably the best Minecraft player. Now I feel like we gotta address the elephant in the room and I don't mean that one right there. You have no face. Why are you completely faceless? I just blew up so quickly and then it kind of became a part of like the fan art and a part of the community so quickly. It was not a calculated move. It was just kind of like something that happened. You almost didn't have enough time to be like, okay, time to switch up the content, put my face in it. It just kept going. I feel like it all kind of like came together in this way where it was kind of the perfect storm. How many people that you know online have ever seen what you look like? Only a couple. I mean, obviously I live with uh, Sapnap. But all the other people that you're constantly playing games with have never seen your face. George has never seen your face. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> As even people, I've never said that. People are going to be like, oh, come on, George, really? Like, people, people think that. Alyssa, who's a really good friend of all of ours, who used to be on the Dream SP, she's seen my face and it's like, she brags about it and like Sapnap will brag about it to George, like as a joke, like, oh, haha, like you haven't. Do your IRL friends and family obviously know who you are? A lot of them do. Not not all of them. Really? So there's some people that you're close ish to that don't know? I'd say my, my closest friends and my closest family know. There's definitely people that I'm close ish with that have no idea, but. Has anyone that you know like talked about Dream or Minecraft that you haven't revealed? Oh their yeah, to? they're talking about like Minecraft creators and mentioning like the Dream SMP or something. And it's like, okay. What does that feel like knowing that you are part of something that someone who knows you well enough to like talk to you in person like, has it's no like idea? Hannah Montana. <laughs> yeah, are you gonna like burst through on the stage Take and be the like, it's me, bitch? To what extent do you go to make sure that you remain anonymous? Like, are you taping over all of your webcams, like your your iPhone camera and all that stuff? I mean, I've done that since like I was young. So that's just kind of like oh, I think yeah. when you know about technology, usually you're kind of like True. iffy about that stuff. I don't. Please don't hack my webcam. Please. <laughs> Again, I think it's mostly just COVID. Like everyone's so used to like wearing a mask and not going many places. Has anyone? 
anyone recognize your voice in public? I, I don't want to get into it, but <laughs> okay. Okay. you can take okay. that as an answer. Okay, I'll take that. Do you think remaining faceless has actually contributed to your success? I think it has, but I think it's more of that it's unique, I guess, so it's something to talk about. True, that is like one of the things that's attached to your description, I feel. There's like a lot of mystery, obviously, and that kind of creates some sort of like hype of like, oh, like this is cool, and I think the fan art's really cool. I think that's a benefit. Please don't stop doing that once I face reveal. Keep, keep doing that. Do not stop the fan yeah, art. Um, but I think the biggest downside is just not being able to express myself fully. I want to be able to do things that you can't do. Like, let's say go and meet people. It's restricting on the things that I can actually do. And being able to like do like TikToks or, or, or different forms of content, it hasn't had a negative effect. I think it's had a positive effect. Does that make you nervous at all about, you know, when you do a face reveal, there's no turning back these things aren't necessarily going to be synonymous with you as much as your face? Not really. The smile mask and all stuff, that's all gonna be part of my brand, even after face reveal. I think it's more so, it's mm. just gonna be a new chapter. Like I'll be able to do so many things that I haven't been able to do. My goal is to take full advantage of it. So you plan to do a face reveal. How do you plan to do a face reveal? I'm not sure. I wanna do it with my friends and I wanna do it in some way where people can participate somehow. And so I've thought of mm. like a meetup or some kind of event. I feel like you could literally sell out like Staples Center. <laughs> that just feels so like self-centered. Like guys, <laughs> come see my face. Yeah. Pay money. All, like, it's all you silly. do is walk out, and the seats are so far away that they have to look at your face on the jumbotron. But there's fireworks going off. It's like holy, yeah, I would, it's I, dream. And then you just walk into the back, and then you go to sleep. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that, but. <laughs> But you could. I would do it in a way where it wouldn't be the center of things. That feels so cheesy. <laughs> like, like, how egotistical is this guy? He's, he's like charging you to see his face. Are you nervous about? the first thing people are gonna say when they see your face. Not really. My face has had nothing to do with my content in any way whatsoever. I'm still gonna be the same way with that where it's not gonna be, you know, shoved in your face or like if you follow me on Instagram or something, maybe you'll see it. But like, if you're just like a casual viewer, it's gonna be no different at all. Can you get into any of the ideas that you have for what you might do after you do your face reveal? I think the biggest thing is probably just meeting people, being able to do collabs with people yeah. that I, I wouldn't be able to do now, like Mr. Beast. The internet will break when there is a Mr. Beast X dream video. <laughs> I hope so, that'd be awesome. How do you deal with harsh criticism? It's weird because I feel like I'm so argumentative. I just always have been. My go-to whenever somebody criticizes me is always like, oh, what an idiot. Blah, 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 blah. Like I take it more like, mm, I want to argue with this person because I think they're wrong. So you find it to like a, a fun debate? Sometimes I do, but I feel like it leads to like me being an idiot sometimes because I reply to people that I shouldn't reply to. Yeah. So people are pestering you and then they get a reaction from you and then they're like, oh, Dream will interact with me and anyone who pesters him. To me, it's just I see somebody say something. It's like, oh, that's not true. I'm going to reply. To this. But you're not taking it personally? No, no. I mean, they don't know anything about me. Like they're saying something, making an assumption about me or something. And it's like, okay, well, you, know, you can say what you want. I don't really care. So there's been some controversy surrounding the legitimacy of one specific speedrunning record that you set with people claiming that you, you know, maliciously hacked the game to give you a competitive edge. And some people have gone as far as to say that this allegation completely delegitimizes your entire career. How has this all affected you? It's hard when people say stuff like that or when people use that as a, a reason to attack my character or my accomplishments or anything in that way. The one record that was removed from the boards was it wasn't even a world record. And I had three other world records that I had gotten right. from before. And those aren't even in question, right? They're not, and they've been up for a while. But and the thing is, I, mean, I didn't even upload a video on it. That was just a run I did on my Twitch. And you're saying that to kind of show that like you didn't do it just for clout, kind of, which is probably what some people are assuming. In the grand scheme of things, like it's such a small part of my career, I guess, than me as a person. I mean, I handled the situation like horribly. <laughs> I mean, I did. Whenever it originally came out, my response was like, oh, you guys are idiots, blah, blah, blah. How do you wish that you would have approached that response? I should have shut off all my devices for a couple days and been like, okay, let me not react with emotion. Give it some time to, to breathe and then come back to it when you're kind of approaching it from a more level-headed place. That is kind of a downside of blowing up so quickly that I wasn't used to like criticism coming in like waves of like mm -hmm. tens of thousands of people instead of just one guy saying, hey, yeah. I don't like that you did this. There was an adjustment period and I feel like I've definitely since then grown and learned that that's not the right way to approach anything. Being able to use that situation as something that you can reflect on and say, I wish I would have done it differently. I think that's a huge sign of, of growth, knowing that you aren't always right. Your first inclination isn't always the correct one. I feel like when you look at anybody under a microscope, you're gonna see the flaws and the imperfections. And mm -hmm. I think being able to realize that and go, hey, I'm not perfect and try and improve. Before we continue learning about the world of dream, how do you feel about people who are fervently trying to deplatform or cancel you like every day? 
I'd like to thank Honey for their continued support in sponsoring this series and allowing us to work with the incredibly talented artist Jess Brish who brought Dream to Life for this video. You may recognize this work from the I Spent a Day with Corpse episode, which turned out flawlessly, and I'll go ahead and include a link up here in this corner for you to check that out as well. But back to our sponsor, Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart so you don't have to stare at that empty discount code box and it's cold dead eyes every time you try to check out because if Honey finds a working coupon, a little Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online ranging from tech to popular fashion brands and food delivery. Honey has personally saved me a stupid amount of money when it comes to buying things online, including my lunch today. Thank you. Honey is literally free and installs in just a few seconds. So if you want to do yourself a solid and also support this series, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Padilla. Again, it's free. And if you go to joinhoney.com slash Padilla, you'll be directly supporting this series. Now back to the world of dream. What do you think about the discussion that your fans or stands are toxic and that you need to denounce everything transgressive that any of them do? In every single fan group and in every single group of people in the world, there's gonna be bad apples. There's gonna be people who say dumb things and do dumb things. Things, holding them accountable and calling them out when people do stuff like that is good. But I don't think mm -hmm. that it's my responsibility that I'm accountable for everything that anybody who right. has ever said my name mm -hmm. does. Like with how many people you have who are fans of you, who like have you as their display picture in their bio saying dumb stuff online, you would have to say something every single day if you had to address every single thing. Most of the time when somebody tweets something or says something that is bad, they're only seen by a couple hundred people, which is like way, way, mm -hmm. way less than 1%, and then if I say something about it, then everyone sees it, and so it's like, right. now- So it's almost like you bring more attention to it if you address it. I get so much crap for not saying stuff about certain things. I'm like, dude, if I say something, it makes it, it's 100% gonna make it worse. It's one of those disconnects where I feel like people just don't want to accept that there's just some people that are just like screwed up. And obviously if you have a huge fan base, like let's say 20 mm -hmm. million people, there's gonna be a bunch of people that do bad things. There's also gonna be like millions and millions of people that are that do amazing things. How do you feel about people who are fervently trying to deplatform or cancel you? Like, every day. I think it's something that every creator has to deal with. If someone's trying to hold somebody accountable for something that they did, like as an example, something that I would have said in the past or I would have done in the past, and they go, oh, wow, this is defensive to me. And people have done in the past, and it's just like, oh yeah, dude, that's not me anymore, I'm sorry. Yeah, and then that's when that growth should be rewarded. You know, if we're constantly saying, wow, you said that word, at some point you defended someone saying it, at some point you should never, like you never deserve encouragement to grow, then it's kind of having that opposite effect of what I think many people think they're doing. Yeah, and the biggest thing is just recognizing when somebody is genuinely trying to just tell you, hey, this wasn't cool, versus when somebody's trying to de-platform you for something that you've grown from or you've apologized for. That's a really important thing. You started reaching beyond Minecraft and dabbling in other fields. You started making music. I never would have thought that I'd make music, but I feel like it's one of those outlets where you really can express yourself fully, like your emotions True. and how you feel. I never really sang when I was younger, so it's been a lot of learning and an experience, but it's been so much fun. On your new track, Mask, it sounds like it has a very different sound than your first one. Like you kind of are honing in on your singing sound. It's way more like genuine to me and yeah. how I feel comfortable singing it. There's much more raw vocals and there's never raw vocals in any song, but but, <laughs> but raw vocals in that. No, like, that's perfect. <laughs> that's no filter, no auto tune, perfect dream voice. <laughs> you tend to be pretty private in terms of what you tell the internet about your personal life. Was it kind of an emotional release to get some of these lyrics out there? Some of them pertaining to putting up a front of happiness behind your smiley face mask. Even when I was a kid and I was playing Minecraft and I was going through depression and and like I said, I was struggling at school and I'd put on the mask and become dream and then I'd be happier because I'd be playing with my friends and playing Minecraft. You almost get to put on a, a new persona and be a little bit detached from any difficult emotions that you're dealing with. You mentioned that you have ADHD and you've kind of had periods in your life where you struggled with that. Masking is a term that's used to describe putting on a, a front kind yeah. of and like not showing that you have ADHD. Do you feel like that kind of helped influence the song? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, in the second verse, there's a lyric. They think that I need glasses. I literally was tested for glasses when I was a kid because I was having a lot of trouble in school. I couldn't never pay attention. I was always doodling, I was drawing, I was writing down stuff. I was always doing anything but paying attention. And that's something that happens a lot to people with ADHD because they're trying to figure uh, out, oh, well, you know, what's wrong? You must be having trouble seeing if he's doing bad in class because I'm having trouble focusing. I had ADHD medication. I was like mad and I remember mm -hmm. pouring it down the drain. Was it changing the way that you were? Like, did you not feel like yourself?
yourself on your meds? I, I didn't feel like myself because I feel like I was way less creative. Like my mind didn't mm. drift as much. I stopped doing the things that were making me do bad in school, like you know, not draw, drawing, drawing. <laughs> the things that made place. you do bad in school that were distracting you from school were what brought you happiness. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know enough about them to comment on whether that was smart of me to do. I don't want to encourage anybody to do that. I, I've, I haven't been on um, like medication for ADHD since then. I feel like it's, it is a unique thing that I, I'm proud of. Do you think any of your ADHD symptoms have kind of almost contributed to help you become who you are now as Dream? I do. I feel like one of my biggest strengths is like I'm creative. And I feel like one of the things that helps me with coming up with ideas and stuff is I can just like run through things. Like I can be like, oh, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. And I can go through like a thousand in like half a second. The same reason that I talk so fast is just because I'm thinking quickly. And that kind of only happens when it's things that you're excited about, right? Yeah, no, if I'm excited, I'm just like a million miles a minute. I'm stumbling over my own <laughs> thoughts. And I was like, because I was like, it's not really like, People a lot of times trying to explain it's like a lack of focus. And in reality, it's like you just focus on the wrong things a lot of the time. I can sit there and edit a video for 12 straight hours and then afterwards be like, right. holy cow, I'm so thirsty. I'm dehydrated. I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I haven't peed in six days. That could be really like, I'm just hyper fixating. How does that feel knowing that people are now going to kind of have some insight into this very private part of your life? It's scary. <laughs> it is It's definitely scary. <laughs> there it is. I knew you'd be scared about something at some point. Before my first song, like the day before release, I got so sick, like out of nowhere. I had like a swollen like lymph node in my throat. It's because your body's like, str like you're stressed. You're like, stress can't affect your body. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're sad and then it makes water pour out of your eyeballs. <laughs> After it was released, I was like so relieved. Hopefully yeah. this time, I don't think I'm going to be as nervous just because I'm more comfortable and I've already gone through it. It is definitely nerve wracking knowing like I'm putting out there uh, part of me that I've never really put out there before. So what's next in your career? Are you gonna continue doing music? Is it, are you just a strictly Minecrafter for life kind of guy? If you want, I'll tell you what my next video is, but you have to bleep it out. You can't, <laughs> you can't have it in there. Okay, okay, give me, give me, give me the dirt. My next video, he's gonna say like yeah. Wait, in real life? In real life. <laughs> okay. He's gonna be trying to before the No! <laughs> it's like Fear Factor shit. Yeah, yeah, sort of. <laughs> What do you think the biggest misconception is about you? A lot of people think that I am very, very conceited. And I don't think that I'm conceited. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't a conceited person not think they were conceited? That's true. That's that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> no, I've talked I've talked to you a bunch. I don't think that you're conceited. Why, why do people think you're conceited? I always try and be like positive and confident. Sometimes it can be taken as that way. After like me and Technoblade did like a duel and I lost. And I remember after that duel, I was in some stream and I said something along the lines of like, oh, if it was any other day, like I could have won. It's, it's just me trying to convince myself like, oh, like, you know, you can do better than that. I think that the biggest reason that someone might think that is because it wasn't just you saying, I am gonna be better next time. It was almost like saying that you should have yeah, and that yeah. you deserve to beat someone yeah. for it almost. Like if they don't know you personally, if they don't know you, what you actually mean, those words maybe aren't specific enough for someone to like understand what you really mean. I, I definitely realized that when I was looking back and I was like, ah, and one of the things where it's just in the back of your mind, like obviously you're gonna think that, but saying yeah. it is a different thing. When you say something, you, as a content creator, should be very, very specific with what you do you mean. You, know? yeah. you, you can't leave any gray or you can't leave it up for interpretation. And that's definitely something that was like an adjustment because I feel like you have to over explain a lot of things like as a content creator. All right, you got five seconds of shout out to promote anything you want directly into camera, go. Shout out to my cat Patches because we never talked about her. <laughs> She's gonna get jealous, so I have to mention oh her. Oh my God, you don't wanna see piss Patches. <laughs> <laughs> Only a small percentage of people that are watching this video <laughs> is actually subscribed to his channel, True. To Anthony's channel. True. You guys need to subscribe right now if you're in that small percentage. Check the button. You may not even know that you're not subscribed. Just check. Yeah, it's free and you could always change your mind. Always change your mind. But don't change your mind. <laughs> After spending the day with Dream, I've come to understand just how overwhelming having millions of eyeballs hyper-focused on your every move can really be. Regardless of if we have a face attached to our identity or not, we all have everyday struggles and what the rest of the world sees in us is only one aspect of any story. Do you disguise your voice in public at all just to make sure it doesn't happen? I remember one time I did. You're like, who, me? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's what you say too. <laughs>